Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, as I promised, I'm going to do you a video on making a redneck camper. Now, what do I mean by that term? What do I mean by a low buck beer budget? If you don't have champagne dreams, I've got a beer budget. But I want a camper. I want something to use as a portable base of operation so I can drive out to a hunting camp late at night and be able to climb in the back and sleep comfortably to get up at 4 a.m. and go to my deer stand. Or fishing, being able to pull out there to the lake the same way and be able to sleep in the back of it without having to worry about a, setting up a tent and everything else. Now, as all of you know, I'm a big hammock camper and outdoor camper. I love to go and set up camps. But there are times that a camper is just so much advantage to it. And I have watched a lot of my friends get RVs and campers. And there is something to be said for that. You know, yes, they do have a lot of comfort and etc. but what are you paying for? So let's define what we're going to talk about. First off, is this going to be a primary vehicle that I'm going to be driving every day? In which case, it's probably going to be kind of awkward because when you convert one over to being a camper, you lose a lot of cargo capacity and etc. Or a true camper. Now a lot of guys go and buy the, today they'll go buy the, the big four-wheel drive trucks or the, the big Jeep gladiators or whatever and they'll fill the back solid full of all kind of amenities, generators, coolers, it slide out trays every which way and there ain't no room in it and now they got to climb up on top of it, sleep on a tent on top and now you need a trailer to haul the other cargo. And you end up with a $100,000 rig. And if that's what you're interested in, this ain't the video for you because that is very much a luxury, a great way to do it if you've got that income. But the vast majority of people today in today's economy don't have that income and so they want to make a beer budget camper and so that's what we're going to talk about a redneck camper so we start with an old pickup excuse the shooting guys i'm down at my place near the shooting range so and uh so what are we going to start with well you're going to start with an old pickup truck now where to find such trucks. Now my truck that I'm going to be using is my old personal truck which is a 1990 Nissan hard body two wheel drive four cylinder with a stick. I have had this vehicle since 1990. It has been all over the country with me. Everywhere. I have put I have put three alternators Two complete, three complete sets of brakes on it, a power booster brake on it. I have put three, two starters on it, three water pumps, and I had to have the re transmission rebuilt. We've never been in the motor since then. How many miles does it have? Well, I can only guesstimate because the speedometer broke in 1995 when the truck was only five years old and it had 256,000 miles on it then in 1995. This was the truck we used to rendezvous with. Well, we were going to Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York State, uh, Florida, Mississippi, just all over the place these national events. So this was the truck that was the road trip truck. I, we drove all over the place. And so conservatively estimating, just taking that 250,000 miles in five years and being conservative, it's 700, 800,000 miles on this truck. So yeah, but it uses a quart of oil per month, maybe. It still gets about 22 to 23 miles to the gallon. It fires right up when you hit it with a key and I got no problems. So it's a perfect candidate for this type of, of procedure. Now, you finding your old vehicle, and that's what I want this first episode to be about, is finding the vehicle that we're going to do this with. One, I do not recommend the old Nissan. Yes, I know, it's a contradiction. I love my old truck, but I recommend a Chevy or a Ford. 
why parts are available, readily available. In fact, there's an entire other industry that makes up parts for classic trucks for the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, Ford and Chevy pickups. Virtually every part is available, you know. So I can start with a donor truck that's been sitting here a while and create the truck I want if I need to, okay? So, you can since Chevys, which are my thing that I'm the most versed with, are so interchangeable. I know that for my C10 Chevy, my full-size Chevy truck that I had for many years, uh, ironically, that was the hunting camping truck that I got, so I wouldn't use my new truck. Uh, and I have since totally restored it into a like a show truck and got rid of it. Um, that truck, you could drop in modern engines, will bolt right in. Modern transmissions will bolt right in. Modern rear end will bolt right in to those model trucks. And so you had something you could build upon. You could get parts for. So, where are you going to find such a truck? Well, don't go to dealerships. Don't go looking uh, in the for sale ads because usually those are not that great. People don't get rid of a truck unless there's something wrong with it usually or it's a business or something like that. Definitely do not look at a farm truck because truck and farming is heavy use. A farmer will run a truck until it's falling apart. He can't hold it in the road anymore before he's going to get rid of it because he wants to keep his profits as high as possible and he's not going to replace a truck unless he's made a lot of money and he's got to buy something for a tax write-off. Let's just be real. An estate sale is what you're looking for. Some old guy like me that had an old beloved old truck that he's taken care of for 15, 20 years. And it's in great mechanical shape and you can get it for a song. That's the truck you're looking for. Now, what components do you want to look at about a vehicle like this. Okay, has it been wrecked? That can be an advantage, I'll get to that in a minute. But is it all beat up? Are the fenders relatively straight? Is the hood on it good? Is the body to be in a workable order? Now remember I said for the old Chevys and the Fords, every panel and part is available. So if you find a Chevy and the hood is just screwed up, you can get a new hood for it. You can get a new fender for it. You can get a new bed for it, a cab for it, a door for it. You can virtually start with a frame and build a complete truck. So it's something that, is it not a detriment right now to drive it, then maybe it'll be something I can replace down the line for cosmetics, okay? The motor. Stay away from the diesel motors. I know that's going to sound like a, a, a thing, but... The older model trucks with diesel trucks, the parts are not that available. It's harder to find, so stay with the gas banging engine. Uh, don't go with the wild high horsepower 450 whatever. Stay somewhere around in a Chevy, a 350 Chevy, and a 350 transmission is the best choice because there are parts everywhere for them. And you can find them in junkyards. You can find them in that. Your, your cousin over here's got one sitting out back you need parts for. So therefore, Something with a 350-350 combo, something like that. Get with people that know more about vehicles than you do and find the rock-solid, unbreakable engines. That's what you're looking for, if at all possible. Okay. Now, let's say I have found a Chevy truck. It's in mechanically great shape, but the engine is just gone in it. Brand new crate motors are available. That's a, a brand new engine. And for the cost of buying the motor and having it installed, it's probably going to be like two grand, two and a half grand, something like that. But then you'd have a vehicle with a virtually brand new engine. You have a new engine vehicle. If it's got a rock solid transmission rear end and the rest of it, you got a new vehicle. So you're paying three thousand dollars for a truck you paid fifty dollars for to get after somebody's yard. You see. So think of that. Educate yourself. Yes, it is possible to bring them back. But we want to start out with the best one we can find. Is the windshield intact? Are the mirrors intact? Are any of the chrome pieces there? Etc. If not, find out if you can replace them or if you can just live without them. Okay. The rear end. Is it in good shape? Do you need four-wheel drive or can you live with two-wheel drive? Okay. That's going to be based upon your environment and what kind of 
areas and terrain you're going to. I personally have only recently got the first four-wheel drive I've had in probably 30 years, and that's a Nissan Pathfinder I just picked up because I've run two-wheel drive cars and trucks almost all my life because my granddaddy taught me. Even if you got a four-wheel drive, drive it as two-wheel drive and use the four to get you out. If you're having to use the four-wheel drive to get you in, you're going to get stuck. And then you got a real problem getting it out. So drive it like a two-wheel drive and only when you need the four-wheel drive because you, uh-oh, I've got a little stuck, put it in four-wheel drive and get you unstuck. But if you, if you have to go in just bogging it down to the bottom and, man, it's barely crawling, you're going to get stuck. In which case, you're going to have to find somebody with something bigger and better than you to come get you out. And that's a headache. So we're going to make a camper here, not a exploration vehicle. So we want something that I can explore. I can go to camping areas, hunting areas, stuff like that. Yes, it'd be nice if it's four-wheel drive. But that adds cost and that adds a headache because you've got to maintain all that extra running gear. Okay? And usually an older vehicle with four-wheel drive means it's been running ragged out. And a cheap four-wheel drive is normally a wore-out four-wheel drive. A two-wheel drive is far cheaper. And a two-wheel drive and some come-alongs and stuff to unstick it is a lot cheaper than just a maintenance upkeep on a four-wheel drive. Just my two cents worth. Okay, you have found you a vehicle that you think will serve. It's at a price you can afford. It's got an engine that I can get parts for and I can replace. You've got other components like fenders and stuff like that I can get parts for, I can replace. Great, now we begin the next step. The bottom basis, cheapest way to start out with a camper is one of these beer can tin tops. These are everywhere. A lot of people pick these up and if you start asking around and, and put it in social media, hey I'm looking for one, you'll probably find 10 people that's got one sitting in their backyard. I've seen these used as the lid for a chicken coop when they sold the truck but they kept the lid. These are cheap and available. It's a thin tin top about like a trash can and it's set up with windows and stuff like that. That's what I went with because it was cheap and easily replaceable if it got beat up. I made some modifications, and we're going to talk about modifications later on. But I put these on top to be a rack where I could put a canoe on top, I could carry gear on top, etc. This is just held on by clamps to the bed, which means I can take it off. Because if you have a pickup truck, and for this is for those of you that have never owned a pickup truck before, if you have a pickup truck, you're never lonely because you've got some friend that, oh, you've got a pickup truck. Well, we're moving my son to college, and could you help us out moving? Everybody wants help moving. So that's another reason not to make it a daily driver, to have it set up to be a camper, because you can say, I'm, I'm sorry, mine's set up as a camper. I, I can't take the stuff. I ain't got room to haul your piano, or I can't move your kid to college. I'm sorry. It gives you a good an out. But these 10 tops are easily repairable. They're easily put on and off by one person, and that's an advantage. Now, we're going to insulate the top of this, and this is in the mods that are coming. We're going to paint this. You see how my paint is wore completely off? This will happen over time. So we're going to repaint this, and we're going to paint it a color that goes with this. I've gone with an OD green and black, so my rims are now OD green, so it's going to be OD green up here on this, and I'm going to show you how we're going to paint that. We've modified it by adding these crossbars. And you notice how I've let them stick out some. There's a reason for that. That's because I'm going to have accessory bars that come off this to perform a separate function. And it gives me a lash point out here as well as this eye bolt. Okay? This eye bolt goes all the way through into the frame of the lid and anchors. So that way it holds this load in place. And I can hook bungees to it or whatever. But I can also anchor to this. And so that gives me carrying capacity and capacity to come off and use this for other functions. Mine has just a simple door on it. There is this myth of these can be made secure. I'm going to tell you real world, it isn't. You can lock it to where you cannot unlock it. But if somebody wants into this, they're going to bust that glass and get into this. You cannot make any kind of camper 
totally secure. That's just the way it is. And so that's another reason. That's what I want to touch on now is why we're going with this old stuff. Why not, Blackie, why don't I just go get me a new truck, put me a new camper shell on it, and set it up? Yes, you can. But let's look at what we're going to be doing with it. You're going to go out into the back country, and you're going to park it here on this deserted dirt road. And you're going to go down in there about two miles, and you're going to go fishing at that super secret honey hole you know of. That means this vehicle is going to be sitting all alone on the side of a road. What are the odds of it being broken into? Here's another reason why these old vehicles are an advantage today in our present economy. A lot of the, a lot of the newer vehicles, they're stealing the uh, catalytic converter out from under them. Somebody will shinny under there with a hacksaw and have it off in five minutes. And that's worth a lot of money. The airbag in your vehicle is worth a lot of money. And somebody that knows how to steal them, they can have them like that. Stereos, other components, clothes, those big, nice battery packs. So you want to take a $100,000 Gladiator Jeep full rig setup and leave it sitting all alone for 12 hours while you go take your boat and go down the river to steelhead fish? Uh-huh. That's something to consider. Because what is your investment and what's the odds of it being stolen? What's the odds of it being broke into? So this has to be something. We're on a beer budget, guys. If this is broken into, all right, now let's look at my old rig here. One, it's an old truck. It has little or no collector value. It has little or no electronic desirability today. There's nothing on this that somebody can easily steal right now and go make money on. I ain't got no custom rims, nothing. There's nothing here that they're going to steal that's worth their time. Okay? If they steal the truck, can they drive a stick shift? And I will, in later on episodes, show you how to disable your vehicle before you leave so they're not going to crank it up and drive it away. They may vandalize it, but they're not going to steal the truck because I'm going to make it where they can't steal the truck easily. Okay? Next, I've got this vehicle out here, and I'm going to set it up to be a camper. What do I mean by a camper? Well, I want to be able to open this up, and this is the smallest truck I would even consider doing this with. Drop the tailgate on there. And as you can see, I've got stuff already in there. Now that's camping stuff. All right, this is going to be reset to a modular like system where I will have a bed in here that I can take in and out should I need to. I will have awning, tarp, camp boxes set up so I can easily slide them to the tailgate just one, two, three and set up a camp in rapid succession. And so I have a mosquito net that will go around this and drop down on all sides so that I can go in and out and not have to close this at night. I have a power source that will allow me to run a fan in this during the summer. That's a big thing here in the south. And run lights with it so that I don't have to carry a lantern unless I want to. In the winter, I want to be able to shut it up tight and be able to hold the heat in. And I'll show you how we're going to do that in order to be able to camp out in the winter and use it as a hunting camp, fishing camp, etc. My goals for this that you're going to get to see with this are this vehicle will be able to easily transport a canoe, a kayak, etc. I'll be able to go from A to B and set up in less than 30 minutes, completely set up. I will have a awning off the back of it with a cooking area, sitting area, eating area. I will have designated cooking and eating supplies in here with my cooler that I can pull out in an instant. I'll have a bed that sat in place and will provide me an instant bed, bookshelf, and etc. right there ready to go. In the summertime, I'll have a fan and lights to help make it more pleasant at night. In the winter, I'll have lights and a heat source that I can use to keep the chill down. I'm not going to run a true heater, but I have a way to warm it up a little to keep that cutting, eh, biting edge off. So in the morning when I get up, I'll be warm, okay? These are little things that we're going to do. We're going to deal with how do you carry a spare tire? How do you carry and set this up to be your camper, not attract a lot of attention, not be desirable to ne'er-do-wells that find your vehicle at the lake, at the campsite, on the side of that road, at the end of that dirt trail? 
make it where it's not where they can easily steal it or even get into it. We're going to deal with all that. But I wanted in this first episode up front, I wanted you to see where we're coming from. This is what we're starting with. This is a beer budget as you can get, guys. As real world common man as you're going to find. We're going to start on the bottom tier. And we're going to turn this into something that's comfortable. It's going to have the bed. It's going to have cooking ability. It's going to have rain shade ability. It's going to have a shower. It's going to have a toilet. All in that little bitty truck. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And there will be more videos in this series coming up. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.